Hey guys, about a year and a half ago, I did a keel guard made out of Kydex version number one. And I gotta be completely honest with you, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Here it is on my native Slayer Propel 10. And as you guys can see, I gave this thing the beating of a lifetime. And here's the Kydex keel guard. I put that on with tape. I think I have some over here. Just, I think it's like Gorilla Tape. And as you guys can see, man, I beat it up and look at this. Probably because it sits right here, but it cracked. And can you imagine if that was my kayak haul? Woo, man alive. So never popped off, held up like a boss, but I got a version two. So as many of you guys know, I picked up a bona fide P127 just a few months ago and I'm kind of modding it out. And I got to create a keel guard. And since I like the Kydex so much, I'm going to use Kydex again. However, I'm going to change up the, the adhesion that I'm going to be using to kind of keep it to the boat. Even though the tape worked, I want to try out something different for you, for you guys. And being that this has such a, I think, steeper grade than my native Slayer Propel 10, uh, I'm gonna have to cut the Kydex a little bit different, so I'm gonna share a little bit about that as well. So guys, I've done a lot of research on this, and there's a lot of goofy videos out there on YouTube saying how you can use duct tape or gator tape or any type of equivalent as a keel guard. And let me go ahead and save you a bunch of time. That's ridiculous. It's not gonna work. The second you hit any type of bottom, that is going to scrape off. And what you end up going to have to do is you're gonna have to remove all of that gator tape or duct tape or whatever it is. And it's gonna leave a sticky mess for you to clean up. And then you're gonna end up coming to this video and actually making one that stays on forever. So save yourself some time, save yourself some money, do a hard pass on the tape options and let's go ahead and hop into this guy. There are a bunch of options out there that you can purchase keel guards. Um, but some of them can be really expensive. Like the really nice ones can cost like $150 and less expensive ones, um, which have some good ratings. The pair of guards can run 50 to $90, depending on the length that you need. So if that's what you want, I mean, go for it. If you want a really easy kind of just a sticker type base deal, go ahead and buy one of those. I'm sure it worked for you. But uh, the materials you're gonna need for this one uh, are only gonna cost you 20 bucks. So. I went and ordered two pieces of Kydex and I'll put the link down there in the description below. And so there's the two pieces of Kydex um, we're gonna use. I'll talk a little bit about that more in a second. And then I'm gonna change up the adhesion and use marine goop and I'll tell you why I did that as well. So Kydex is, is a thermoplastic acrylic polyvinyl chloride material. And why it's so popular is that one, of course, it's waterproof, right? It's also, scratch resistant, has a Rockwell hardness of 90. That's super strong, which is awesome. And when you heat this bad boy up, you can mold it and when it cools, it stays in that position. So it's used for gun sheaths and gun holsters. And so as you can see, being waterproof, scratch resistant, hard and moldable, how it would make for a top of the line keel guard for your fishing kayak. All right guys, let's talk tools you're gonna need for this kind of DIY. Not a whole lot of tools, this is great. You're gonna need some leather gloves because um, you're gonna be molding the Kydex and it gets hot when you heat it up with your heat gun. If you don't have one of these, they're really cheap. I'll throw a link in the description below. I use this for a lot of my mods. I just finished it up yesterday um, doing a kayak crate with rod holders in order to flare the rod tubes on the PVC or ABS. I use a heat gun. So I've used this like 10 times in all my mods. So grab yourself one of those, really cheap. Um, you're gonna need you know, a pair of tin snips. If you don't have tin snips, and if you have a scroll saw, which actually I'm gonna be using today, I'm gonna use a scroll saw. Um, but if you don't have a scroll saw, you can wear, use one of these. Scissors don't work, you need something with a little more power. Uh, and then a pen and a piece of paper. So the first thing you wanna do, of course, flip over your kayak on a table so you can work on it. Something to keep in mind though, and when you flip over, and if you have you know any type of rudder system, make sure when you flip that over, you're not putting the entirety of the weight on your steering handle here because you don't want that to snap off. So just keep that in mind. Uh, make sure you're just not putting extra due pressure on that bad boy. I uh, don't want to break that off and make this really cheap keel guard DIY mod a really expensive one. First thing to make the trace of kind of what we want our keel guard to look like. So what I do is highly recommend just folding a piece of paper in half. Make sure it's symmetrical uh, because it's going to be really difficult to get this to fold over. So now what you're going to do is I would just first off without even even put it on the kayak just create some type of basic basic design there we go like that and then fold it over and use that trace to kind of cut it just gonna trace out that side cut to kind of get it started here
Oh, there we go. Now what you can do, and follow it on this side. All right, now you got to start for your Kai's cue guard. So you see here, uh, I kinda, actually kind of like that. Um, so what you could do is adjust this if you want. The reason I made the indents here is because as you're going around um, the grade, you're gonna want a little less material here so you can kind of mold it. And you want more material on the back side here for adhesion here and of course on the front. So that's why I have it going in twice. Good, now we're gonna take this, trace it onto our kydex. The black permanent marker. You would think that maybe black on black doesn't show, but it does, so you'll be fine there. It's easy for me to see, I'm not sure if you guys can see it. A couple things you can do here, you can just take those tin snips, like I said, and cut all the way around, but my wife is a woodworker, and you can kind of check her out at Wendell Woodworks uh, on, on YouTube if you're kind of into woodworking as well. Um, she has a scroll saw, so I'm gonna use a scroll saw to cut that out gonna go real easy real fast go after you make that cut you'll likely have some rough edges especially if you're using those tin snips and so what you can do is take an orbital sander or whatnot or hand sand the outside to kind of smooth down those edges so I got orbital which is gonna make it go by real fast so another thing I'm going to do is just so uh, my adhesive has something to grab onto is I'm gonna rough up the back side of this because it's kind of smooth uh, with an orbital as well, so I'm gonna do that real fast. Alright, you guys see that? Now that he's have something to bite into, which will probably help it stay on just a little bit longer. Next, I'm just gonna put, I'm gonna clean the area so there isn't no dirt or anything like that. Also, being that I just sanded the back of this, it's probably gonna have a bunch of residue, so using ammonia based cleaner, I'm gonna leave a residue there. Clean that. So to get this to kind of stay there while you mold, just tear off a little piece of tape and decide where you want to put it. I'm going to put mine right about there. And so I'm just going to tape it down so I can have my hands free to work on it. It just kind of sits there. Now, no, the second you put heat over that tape, it's just going to slide off. So I'm going to work on the back here and mold it over. Then let that cool, tape it down, move the tape from the front to the back, and then mold down the front, just so it just, just makes it a little bit easier to work with. You'll know when it's ready because it gets kind of floppy. As you guys can see, got that molded over a little bit. Now they have it molded over a little bit. Gotta tape it back here so I can mold the rest, get this nice and warm. All right, heat it up nicely. All right guys, almost there. As you can see, over right here is a little gap. This here, I need to heat it up and kind of bring it down. And just keep in mind, when you heat this back up after it's cooled, it's gonna to wanna to kind of go back to its original flat position, so it's gonna pop back up. So do a spot, hold it down, let it cool, move to a different spot. Try not to heat multiple spots when you're kind of doing the finishing touches on it because it's, it's always gonna wanna pop, kind of flare back out. So almost done with this one. Uh, I'm just gonna heat it up a little bit more. As you guys can see, kind of like how that design came out. Helped me come around this bend a lot easier. Put some pressure on that. There it is, folks. There it is. Check it out. All right, guys, break out the amazing goop. All right, so the reason I'm using marine goop and the only difference between marine goop and a lot of the other goops out there is that it's UV resistant. 
and um, essentially what that will do is it won't yellow over time. So on the outside of your Kydex kill guard, it won't yellow. So that's kind of nice. So obviously make sure the surface is clean, free from dirt. We already roughened up the surface, which is something that they actually recommend. And so we'll go ahead and open this bad boy up. All right, so a few things to note when using goop. One, I'm gonna wear a glove because this stuff is nasty. Uh, also, whenever you put this on your surface before you mate them together, uh, what you're gonna wanna do is kinda allow that to partially cure approximately around two minutes. Uh, kinda gets a little bit tacky. Now this stuff hardens by something called solvent evaporation and it forms like an immediate bond whenever you kinda mate two surfaces together. So it makes it really difficult to put it in position. So just make sure your position is spot on when you put this on because you're not gonna have a lot of time to kind of maneuver it around. Last two things, this stuff takes around 24 hours to cure depending on the kind of temperature and materials. And so maximum strength on this won't be reached till about 48 to 72 hours. Also, when you take the cap off and put it back on for the first time, you might want to put a little bit of petroleum jelly to the threads before attaching it because this is going to be rock hard the next time you try to take this off if you didn't use the entire goop, uh, which you probably shouldn't because there's way more here than you're going to need for this project. All right, let's get the goop party started. <laughs> All right. And we're gonna apply it in the bottom of the Kydex Kia guard. Start moving it around. Two inches up. All right, guys, there you have it. Got a little bit of goop coming out the backside. Not a problem at all. That's gonna keep kind of water from getting in the inside there. If you're watching this video and it's like a year after I posted this bad boy and you're like, hey, is this thing still holding up? Go and write me. I replied to every single comment out there and I'll let you know if it's still holding up. But here's the thing. Uh, if you don't want to mess around with goop, because that stuff can be nasty, I still stand by my version 1.0 Kydex Kill Guards. So if you want something that's tested over a year and a half by myself and it's still working, uh, I will throw that video up right there. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.